Hello everyone, this is Gally and this is my third video. This time we're going to learn how to use reference. There will be many videos uh, about how to use references because well, I, I draw a lot. So I'm going to make different drawings and teach you how to use them. And uh, first a warning, don't be scared of using reference. Or don't be ashamed if you use it, there's nothing wrong in using one. And I think it's better because it will make you learn uh, how to draw anything you want to draw. And if you observe, you'll see how easy it becomes and it looks much, much better. So let's start. Here you can see I have a sketch I made. It's a rough sketch. Let me ramp up the opacity so you can see. You see? It's a, a dragon. I thought of oranges when making this. I don't know why. So it's gonna be an orange dragon. And of course, I'm not going to finish it right now. I'm just going to show you how to use, uh, uh, well, anatomy references. So this is a sketch, but I put the opacity in a low setting. So I can still see it, but draw over it. So I already started the lines, as you can see, the head. And, well, here goes. This is a reference time. You see, here is the head. It's loosely based on a crocodile, or an alligator. And here I have my references. I would recommend you to use a folder for your layers, like here, if you use Photoshop, you can see that there's the reference folder. And I have feet, hand, color, head and eye, you'll see why. And lines, and sketch, and the background, which you can change any color for it. So I think I'll change it, probably it will look better. Try not to use a really bright color because that might just ruin it. And that sound you hear is my cat. He's playing with a, a bag. I love cats. So, now that we have a color on our background, we can start. So the, the background is fine, just keep it in a lock here so it doesn't move. And I will remove this. Go to your layer, the lines layer, and over your sketch, go Google some references. If you want your dragon to look like a bird, go Google birds. Like it, it's obvious, right? You just go and look for whatever you want. So my choice was uh, a crocodile. So I grabbed special references. Here you have a head, as you can see. There's a crocodile head. There are many. I erased the background around the image, so it doesn't by much space. So as you can see I already started making the shape like the snout of the crocodile. Then I'm taking my freedom in changing the nose. As you can see it's not the same nose. And the details like scales will come later because that will take me a long time. So for the head I grabbed his snout and what I would recommend for you to do is this. It's really simple. If you use Photoshop you'll understand exactly why. And if you don't use Photoshop, that's okay. As long as you know how to use layers, that will be... We're using layers. So that's all you need to learn, how to use layers. So on top of the reference layers, what I'll do is I'll draw a figure on top of the face so with red color or something bright. So this is what I do. You see, grab the, the, the shape of the snout. Try to draw a simple shape over it, so you can understand. You see? It's like a, two rectangles. So you have two rectangles. And that's like the, the original shape, as you can see here. Well, of course, that's a horrible line. Ignore that. So we have the same kind of... It's bigger but it doesn't matter because it's just a reference. You don't have to do it exactly like the photo. That's another thing. When you use a reference, it doesn't mean you have to copy the thing exactly as it is in the same pose and everything, no. The point of a reference is that you can get inspiration from it and then apply it to your drawing. And the more you learn, the more you can take your freedoms with it. And I'll show you an artist. He's called Arvalis or RJ Palmer. I met him in real life. He's a really nice guy. And he draws, if you know, the famous realistic Pokemon. 
Well, he does that too. He grabs real life animals and makes them fantastic. And it looks really, really good. So I'll show you his link in my description right below. I'll write this. Wee shout out to Valles. Yay, he already drew my dragon Gallator. So go Google him, he's awesome. And, well, let's continue. So, here we have the, the normal shapes of the head. And you can always erase this layer, just keep it and hide it instead of erasing it. You might just need it back. So, here is my reference again. And I'll show you a different layer. This is an eye, okay? This is probably not an alligator eye, I think it's a snake. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just Google reptile eye, and that's what came out. So, don't even worry if it's not a crocodile eye, we don't need that. So, try to find, this is a circle, right? Try to find the shapes. The smallest the eye in the dragon, the fiercest it looks. So I can have this big eye, or, I, I will just copy it because I really like it. <laughs> but you could do a little small eye, of course, not here, or, or probably an eye like this. But it, in the bigger the eye, it looks less menacing. It looks cuter for some reason. So if you want your, your dragon to look huge, like a whale or an elephant, or maybe even bigger, uh, the eyes should be small. Elephants have really small eyes and whales have them really small as well. And that makes them scary. <laughs> whales are not scary, but you get what I mean. So, feel free to copy your reference like this. And then you'll start thinking, oh, it has a lot of squiggly lines and I cannot draw them. Well, that's okay. You don't really have to draw everything, just take inspiration from it. And as you can see, there are many scales around the eye. And you don't want to draw them all? Well, that's okay too. You see that there, this crocodile doesn't have these scales, but if you're making a dragon, there's freedom in that. That's why I really love them. You'll see, because you can add anything to your dragon. Scales, if there are none, yeah, just be creative. That's okay. And if you don't like them, erase them. And try again. And if you're drawing with pencil, erase them too. There's no undo button in real life, but it works. So, well, scales can go later, because if I do them right now, it would take me a long time and it will be a boring video. And you don't want to be bored. So. Now look at the head, how it has like this curved shape with the teeth. Crocodiles have one of the strongest bites in the animal kingdom, and for a good reason, because they don't chew, they just crush and rip apart. So you could start like drawing your dragon's teeth the same way, you see it has smaller and it grows bigger, and it doesn't have them in a straight line either, like they go, they go like, there's a space here, you see. There's a space and there's like this big huge fan. You can also take freedoms there. And as you can see the, the mouth, it curves inwardly. It, it, like he looks sad and happy at the same time. It's like he's smiling. I think it's really cute. And well, here we go. Like, you can erase as many times as you need. This is just the sketch and then I'll refine it. You'll see the final drawing soon, someday. Mm -hmm. So, okay, here's a, the rough shape of our dragon head. You can add the teeth later. He looks so funny without teeth. You can add as much detail as you want to it later because it's your character, so you do whatever you want with it. And I'm going to hide the head and the eye reference so I can move on to a different set of things. This time I'll move to the feet. Feet, feet. They look so cool. So I'll zoom out so you can see the rest of my dragon. What is that? Oh, it's a scale. <laughs> okay. So, oh, look at that. No, feet. Here are the feet. So, these are the front feet and these are the hind feet for the crocodile. So I'm going to separate them in a different layer. <clears throat> so, okay, here it goes. Doo -doo -doo. We move this to the hind leg, like this, and we move this to the front leg. And so, go back to your line layer. And you'll see the crocodile has a very short paw. 
because this would be his body. Wait, wait a second. I'm drawing a different layer. This will be his body. And the crocodile's head will be probably here. So he has a very short... Short feet. It goes like this. That was the last video you saw. Remember the hinge we talked about? This is the base, the hinge, another hinge, and the paw. So, you should probably see it better if I draw it. Yeah! Did I just draw on top of my arm layer? Yeah, I just did. Well, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. People are learn how to use layers. This won't happen to you if you know how. Ah, okay. <laughs> So now that we have the the base, the hinge, that's the shoulder. Well, not the shoulder, sorry, the elbow. And the hand. You can see, as I did in the other video, that it's the same thing, it's the same structure. The thing is that it's shorter. So if our dragon, this dragon specifically, was to have that short of an arm, he wouldn't be able to move the way I drew him. And now that I'm looking at it, I think the neck is kind of weird. But I, I'll, I'll correct it later. That's the point for sketches. So now I'm going to try to make in the lines uh, an adaptation of this arm. So you can see that I'm using reference, but I'm not copying exactly the way it is. So if we go for the same thing, here is the, the base, here is the shoulder, the, the elbow, the other hinge, and the ball. Is the same thing as this, but in a different shape. I, you probably need more references than this. You can choose to Google, I don't know, hyenas, wolves, cats, horses, giraffes. I don't know, there's so many animals and they're really easy to draw once you get a hang of it. So you can try the shoulder first. The shoulder of any, I don't know, a hyena for example, goes like this, like it, it bends forward. this and then there's like his elbow and a huge bone which is the radius and the the, the the elbow and everything like the name of the bones I don't even know it and if I started started doing them you'll get confused so I won't do that but like that's the hyena reference for a bone mm -hmm. so if you try this it probably looks too complicated so don't even worry about it I'm going to erase it so I can draw the arm properly. La, 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 la. So the basic part of it, the outline of the muscle, will be a big bicep kind of arm. Pulling here. And his shoulder. Remember, this is not exactly anatomy, anatomy lesson, anatomy, <laughs> whatever you say. Yeah, anatomical lesson, whatever. And I'm not trying to show you exactly how to draw an arm. I'm just showing how to use a reference right now. The others will come soon. Feel free to correct me on anything you feel I have wrong. Just do it nicely. Because we are all learning. And so, as you can see, this animal has five fingers. Yay! You can add five fingers, you can remove the five fingers, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, this animal has a finger like this. Then the other one goes like this. And this looks horrible, so wait. Like this. Yeah? I'm referencing this too. And then what I the tip I give everyone is try to make a simplified shape for the hand. Just just a ball, a simple ball. And add the other fingers like they're sausages. The claws can go later, so don't worry if you have trouble drawing claws. Just draw the general shape of the finger. You can do something like this. As my dragon is standing up on something, I cannot draw the fingers bent like that. And you can see he has a shorter finger here, and his claws, and the details like scales will come later. So that's the reference of a hand, I just use a hand. This is his arm, and I'm going to erase this thing, because you're probably going to mix it up. Almost erase the arm. Okay, here goes back to the lines. So you can see I already have this part and this part as a reference. The crocodile has a chubby arm. His elbow is, is fat, is round. 
doesn't look like a hyena's arm. Hyenas have pointed elbows, but my dragon has that anatomy, so it's completely all right. And we could use this, the, the scales, where they meet the shoulder, you know, the ripples here, you see them? Those. You can add them, and you can add the outlines for the muscles. That's just using the reference, as I told you, doesn't have to look exactly like the picture. That's the point of dragons, you can make them whatever you want. You have freedom. So we have the feet here. No, going to the feet because we're taking too long on the arm. It's the same thing. Now let me move the feet. So, going on the feet. This is a critic of the feet. Hinge. Talon. Reptiles like crocodiles have very funny feet. So I'll just erase this and try to show you what I mean. Like a rectangle. You see? A very horrible rectangle drawn by me. And another squashed rectangle. If you try to simplify the shapes of whatever you draw and try to understand them, it's like an oval. Yeah, try to. Like a, a terrible, terrible rectangle. And try to draw this as many times as you want. That's just like a tip I give you. It works for me. Or you can try making many circles. Whatever works for you. Try to analyze the shape, why it bends, the weed bends, why it works like that. You can also Google the skeleton of the crocodile. It also works. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to the black again. And well, my dragon, as I was telling you, has more of a hyena kind of. Uh, anatomy. So his legs are not going to be that of a crocodile. I'm going to add like the hyena muscles. Ignore my lines, please. I haven't gotten enough sleep and I'm drawing really weird. They're not as clean as I would like them, but this is a sketch. And remember, even if your sketch looks terrible, there's always room for improvement. Don't ever punish yourself because you think it's horrible looking or that you are not good enough yet. You're never gonna be good enough in your mind. But trust me, you're going to inspire many people in your lifetime. When I was younger, when I was 13 years old, little anecdote here, I used to draw anything I could think of, animals, dragons, well, not people. I really hated drawing people, I don't know why. And anything else, right? So I kept thinking, I suck, and someone else does this better than me, and who would ever look at me and say I like your drawings? But guess what? It has happened. Now people like my drawings. And now I probably inspire some people to keep drawing dragons. And that makes me really, really happy. This is something I really wanted to do. And I love teaching, so this is like the best way to put it together. And I would recommend you to never think you're not good enough, you're not inspiring anyone, even if your age is, I don't know, similar to someone who draws better. I, as I told you in my first video, don't be upset because of that. Because one day your art is going to reach someone, at least one person, and they will love it. And they will see your art and they will want to copy it and be like you and then they will find their own style and the cycle will continue. And you will be really happy. Because that's what art is about, to help others, to inspire. You will inspire someone as someone has inspired you before. And I can bet you all have a different artist you admire and feel free to share them in the comments if you want. I love to check out new artists. So, back to our leg. There's scales on this leg. I did not copy the exact leg, of course. But you can add the scales. How to add the scales, you ask? There are too many. Yes, there are too many. The thing is, look at them as rows. So As you can see, this, this foot. I'll try to draw generalized foot. Try to think of it like this. You can see the rows. And then you can just do this. Mm-hmm. And then fill the blanks, fill the scales with different scales. It goes smaller the further away you go from the leg, and bigger the closer you are. Like, that's a simplified sketch, of course. It looks like a checkerboard. Oh my god. But that's the idea behind it. So, I won't erase it right now. It looks like a, I don't know, like a corn. <laughs> if you can do this on his leg, it will go something like this. See the like, big scales. 
smaller and so on. I won't do the scales right now, as I told you, it would take me too long. That's the idea behind the reference. You can use many different kinds of scales from different reptiles. In this case, this is a crocodile, but it doesn't matter. I'm using a hyena crocodile. Haha. <laughs> so it's technically a chimera, not a dragon. So here you have the other leg. I'll finish that later. That was just for now. And I forgot the reptile tail, but you see, crocodiles have really cool tails. But if my dragon were to have a crocodile tail, it will probably not bend like this. It would just be like, like this, straight ahead. But I'm not going to do the tail right now. That will be for another video. As well for the wings, so don't even concern yourself with the wings right now. I'm just trying to find the hand. You see, I found this pretty hand. So you can analyze the scales up close, you can add the scale detail, you can add this to your fingers, or make the fingers like a bird's fingers, the talons like an eagle. There are so many ideas for dragons that you can use, it's really up to you. And this was our video for today. This was how to use reference on heads and arms and legs. If I did the whole dragon, we would never finish. So the next video I do will be about the wings, and the tail, and probably the horns as well. Just let me know if you want something else in the videos. You can also suggest and give me ideas and I'll, I'll try to do it, okay? So this was all for now, guys. Thank you so much, and please subscribe. My happy dragon will love it. Boop, boop, boop. See you later, and you're welcome to show your artists, as I said. If you admire someone, please post it in the comments and I, that will be really appreciated. Thank you, bye-bye.